When did dinosaurs get feathers? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University, teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. Hollywood loves the reptilian ideal of scaly dinosaurs. But science is continuing to demonstrate that dinosaurs were much more bird-like. No other discovery in the last century has electrified the paleontology community as the discovery of feathered dinosaurs. But what are feathers? How did they evolve in dinosaurs? And were all dinosaurs feathered? In 1861, the first fully modern fossil feather was discovered from the late Jurassic Solholfen limestone in Bolaria, southern Germany. The fossil perfectly preserves the anatomy of a modern feather. Feathers are complex integument features. They include the shaft, which near the bottom is hollow and forms the calamus. This is useful for primitive ink pins. Now, above this, are some, uh, some downy fluff. These are called the downy barbs. Now the shaft becomes more solid as it moves up here and that forms this which is called the rancus. The rancus is this central beam. Now at the bottom we have what are called the after feathers and these are near the bottom. As they grip together um, they form what's called the vein. The vein is sort of this body of it. Now the vein is composed of these tiny barbs that are coming off, like little branches, and then each they have little barbellets that contain, contain tiny hooklets. And those hooklets act like, like zippers to grip the surrounding barbellets, and it helps form this stiff airfoil of the vein. Now this construction of the feather is all for the purpose of flight. The angle of the feather's veins provide a uh, wing-like surface that helps to generate both lift and drag as the bird flies through the air. One of the most useful exercises in understanding the evolutionary development of feathers is in looking at how they grow on living birds. Feathers first appear in the skin as follicles, similar to hair, but are stiff and dense. These quills could serve a transitional function as spines that would be useful for protection, much like the spines on a porcupine. These follicle quills are found on the primitive ornithischian dinosaur, Cetacosaurus. Although the integumentary features of Cetacosaurus are fairly flyable, maybe instead of serving as protection, they served as display, as they only appear along the tail. The early ornithischian tailong exhibits long quill or rod-like feathers, which are more bushy and likely made the dinosaur appear much larger to predators. In living birds, these keratin quills break open to expose the complex barbs within. The first feathers to emerge are downy feathers. Now downy feathers lack the hooklets. These fluffy feathers are similar to the fuzzy uh, dinosaur integumentary features found in primitive saurischian dinosaurs, such as Sinosauropteryx, the first dinosaur discovered with feathers from the early Cretaceous of China. These little theropod dinosaurs had the elongated tufts with multiple filaments. Close-up study of these stage two feathers show that they were in nature more like fur than like modern feathers. The fuzzy nature of the follicle strands make them more closely resembling a disorganized feather or the downy feathers. This stage two feather were likely important in keeping uh, the animal warm, just like fur does in, in mammals. The famous Dave specimen of Sinorthosaurus shows that much of the body was covered in this fuzzy integumentary features. Other theropods with stage two feathers include the primitive theropod dinosaur Scuthiomimus from Germany 
indicating that most small theropods had stage 2 feathers. We see the next stage in the evolution of feathers with the small theropod dinosaur Epdextroptrix, which has two styles of feathers, the dinofuzz along the body, but the tail is sporting long feathers, which show long barbs and possibly hooklets to help hold together a primitive vein. This vein was likely useful in theropods that reduce their pony tail and was used for both display and balance. These feathers are a stage 3 or planar feathers without hooklets but containing a ricus. In stage 4, panaceous feathers with hooklets form a stiff, broad vein. Both these feathers form a rancus along the axis of the feather rather than a bush of barbs that we saw with the dino fluff in stage 2 feathers. Another stage 3 dinosaur is Clodopteryx, which had long tail feathers with a rancus, as well as arm feathers with a stiff rancus, which forms sort of a proto-wing. Now it's difficult to tell if it had hooklets, but this is much more bird-like dinosaur than we've seen yet. However, it is with the remarkable discovery of Microraptor, a small dinosaur from China, that we see the final stage 5 feathers in a dinosaur. Microraptor is shaped similar to a bird, but extending from the legs and arms, we see long asymmetrical feathers with a narrow vein on either side of the rancus and a broad side of the vein on the other, forming an aerodynamic surface for the first time. Microraptor was small, about the size of a crow, but exhibiting the most advanced feathers yet discovered on a dinosaur. Microraptor was a Eumeneraptoran dinosaur, the group closest related to birds, and as such these creatures included dinosaurs which were experimenting with the ability to glide or fly for the first time. Numerous specimens of Microraptor have been discovered in China that show a complexity of long feathers extending from both the legs and arms. Reconstructions by artists like Mick Ellison show a creature that resembled a black crow, but with a bony tail, sharp teeth, and clawed feet and wings. Stomach contents of Microraptor show that it fed on birds. This was a gliding predatory dinosaur. Now the origin of birds in the late Jurassic means that these fuzzy dinosaurs coexisted with birds for millions of years and that the origin of birds was both early and nested within dinosaurs and that the origin of feathers may even predate the origin of dinosaurs themselves. Now examples of both Ornithischian and Saurischian dinosaurs with feathers are now known. This does not mean that all dinosaurs were covered in feathers much that, like, it does not mean that all mammals are covered in fur. Heck, that would make us humans look like Chewbacca. But that feathers and protofeathers were an integumentary feature found throughout all of dinosaurs. However, the more advanced feathers, such as the Stage 5 style, um, that are found in Mycoraptor, may have appeared only in the more advanced Manoraptoran dinosaurs and the earliest birds. So don't shrug off the feathers appearing on dinosaurs the next time you see a, a movie or a documentary. The evidence is here that they were feathered and cooler looking than we ever thought before. All right, be sure to illustrate the diversity of feathers and relate that diversity of to how feathers originated among the dinosaurs.